Um, I'm Sharon, Client Service Director. Thank you, Robot, um, <laughs> at CTN Communications. And Olivia and I plan to spend the next 30 to 35 minutes sharing with you some of our insights from some of the client work we've been doing recently. But before we kick off, I just wanted to share sort of an observation. As a comms agency, we certainly see the landscape is, in which we operate is changing. We're really noticing that large advertising agencies, PR organisations, are really moving into the area in which we operate. That brings obviously some opportunities, but a lot of challenges as well. So from a client agency's perspective, uh, relationships and collaboration has never been more important. So we're going to talk about Tullow Oil today and Allianz Global Investors. To kick off with Tullow Oil, for those of you who don't know Tullow Oil, they are a FTSE 100 oil exploration company. They are very relatively young, but very entrepreneurial, growing fast, um, and a really impactful and positive culture. There are just over 2,500 employees globally. They operate mainly out of Africa, but not exclusively. Now, we've been working with Tullow for a number of years, and it's been a very interesting journey so far. So our partnership with Tullow started in 2010, which was the moment that uh, the tap got turned on in Ghana. So hitherto, Ghana had not been an oil-producing nation. Uh, Tullow Oil had worked in partnership with the government there to bring oil on stream. So it was a major, major deal, both for Tullow, who had been you know, quite small, no one had really paid too much attention, and then suddenly there was this big find, um, a massive deal for Ghana as well, obviously, um, bringing oil and, and the whole sort of revenue and spotlight that that puts on them. Um, so in 2010, we worked with them. We had a sort of an on-site team based with Chiswick in the head office, as you would expect, but felt it was really important to understand what was happening on the ground in Accra. So I had a team embedded out there working with our <coughs> Tullow colleagues, um, but also working quite closely with sort of the government and with agencies um, in Ghana. Um, we had a lot of VIPs involved, as you'd imagine. That's the then president, uh, John Atta-Mills, who we had to sort of get on the helicopter and land on an FPSO somewhere 50 kilometres off the coast. Um, logistical challenges, as you would sort of expect, you know, infrastructure, trying to get connectivity, having to sort of manoeuvre a satellite and make sure the signal stayed um, steady. You should be very thankful, online audience, that you're not having to suffer this sort of uh, type of uh, complication here today. Um, but also there was some, you know, collaboration was really important because of the political sensitivities around oil. There was a lot of sort of uncertainty in Ghana about what was, this would mean for local economies. Um, and Tullo and the government were having to work, not, not quite hard, but they were, I think, alive to the fact that information needed to be transparent, freely available, um, and that you know, some of those questions needed to be answered. So a really interesting collaboration on a number of, of points, both technical as well as sort of strategic and, and content-wise. Fast forwarding to... Yes, a very different campaign. So this was targeted at employees and, as you can imagine, an oil company might come under quite a lot of pressure in terms of information security. So we were engaged by a business unit within Tullow to help them educate employees around the risks of information security or not being secure with information. For me, that was, you know, I was honoured to be asked to, do, to work with a different business unit. Often you're just sort of siloed. You work with the comms team only, but they obviously, we built some trust their confidence in us had increased mm. and they asked us to work directly with this business unit team. So we developed a campaign. The uh, sort of centrepiece of which was a, a drama. And I don't know if anyone in the room, you know, I'm sure there are some are familiar with producing dramas for corporate and organisations. We always hope that the drama is the thing that results afterwards, not happens along the way. Um, and in this case, you know, finding, uh, collaborating with the client to really get the accuracy, you know, to unlock the potential of drama. It's all about the detail. It's all about people uh, believing in the world that you're creating and really being able to get these, that emotional engagement. And nothing throws people off more than seeing a world which, quite frankly, doesn't really gel with them. They don't understand it. They don't see themselves in it. So having to collaborate not only with um, sort of business teams within Tullow, as Sharon was saying, so compliance, you know, organisational uh, departments like that, but also people on the ground. So when we arrived in Belisa, small town, rig, miles away from anything, we, you know, we found talking to the people there that some of the accuracy of our script didn't really ring true. So we had to work with them, trust that they, you know, were the ones who really knew what they were talking about to change it and make sure that what we shot. Uh, was going to elicit the type of responses that, were, that we wanted. Um, we'll play you a little minute and a half clip just to get, give you a flavour of, of what the final film was like. Someone said that knowledge is power. 
a commodity. It can be priceless, it can be worthless. It depends on what you do. It was Jasmine who got me into Tyler. She helped me to understand business, its people, its politics. The biggest lines, one one seven to four hundred, and the most critical on prospect. Is that right? Yeah. Being part of a team that strikes oil is going to be a big deal for anyone, particularly if they're as ambitious as she is. So you can't blame her for wanting to shout about it. It was she who introduced me to Kofi. His knowledge and experience of drilling in difficult conditions makes him very important. He understands heavy machinery, but computers aren't really his thing. All set, as you can gather, slightly like a psychological thriller, which uh, I think in the end was a, you know, it, it, it told the message. Um, yeah, and so this, that particular drum was used to really kick off the campaign, and the campaign is still running, as you can imagine, these things don't stop, the threats don't stop. Um, this film was used in workshops globally to st stimulate debate and discussion. We had a number of offline campaigns that followed the same look and feel as the drama. We used the same characters, poster campaigns, offline workshops. So it was really sort of an ongoing campaign, and we were working very closely with the client to adapt that as we went through the campaign. So in terms of Tullow, as a result of working on First Oil and where we are today, we've really developed a strong agency relationship, going from what we were when we were just a sort of, not just, but engaged as an event partner, we now consider ourselves as a strategic agency partner. We help them with, as you can see from the two examples we've shared, we've helped them evolve their visual language. We meet with them regularly to discuss content, their content strategy. We work with their other agencies, so we form an agency partner group. We've been, we're starting to introduce new ideas, new technology, so challenging them to a point, not going too far, but constantly ask, getting them to think differently. And I think that's, that's based and, and grown from the trusted relationship and working collaboratively with, with the team there. Yeah, I mean, even little things like advising on, you know, them coming to us and saying, well, we, you know, we think a lot of the stuff we'd like to do in-house, so, you mm. know, we've just bought an edit suite everyone with horror and can't say that but taking that as an opportunity and thinking like, okay well how could we actually advise you to use that better works better for us actually to understand you know they're the content experts we get to engage with the subjects that we're passionate about so um, seeing things as opportunities rather than threats so in terms of what we've learned from that from Tullo and that those particular campaigns great relationships really do equal great results Stay close to your client and listen. Uh, I think often we're, we're telling them a lot, but we need to make sure that we continue to listen. Particularly for Tullo, it's been so important for us to really understand the strategic priorities for the organisation, not just simply what we've been asked to deliver. Cultural fit, when you're forming a team or putting people in front of a client, make sure that they, they culturally, and the chemistry's there and you fit well. And continually challenge, as we just discussed. You know, we, we do a lot of client um, feedback, so once a year we do an annual client satisfaction survey and interview and what we continually hear is that clients want to be challenged, they want to hear new ideas, they want us to share examples from other clients as well. So moving on to Alliance Global Investors. Alliance GI are the investment arm of Alliance the Insurer, a very different organisation to Tallow Oil and a relatively new client for CTM. They operate in just over, I think eight markets and have 500 um, investment professionals. And this, this is, uh, was an interesting, we, the challenge that uh, came to us was they wanted to run an inclusion and diversity campaign. Um, and right from sort of early doors, it was very much a case of, you know, Ruth, our client, coming in and, and saying, like, this is my challenge, you know, what do I do? I'm a team of, of one, I have partner, partners around the world, but we're, we're a small outfit, but we want to do something different. We really want to sort of push the boundaries. Um, and so right from that early meeting, we, we held a, what effectively became a sort of creative brainstorm with her, sort of just very loosely trying to understand what, what types of topics or themes might gel, what, what we could do, um, with, you know, a very limited budget. She was very open, upfront, saying, I don't have a lot of money to spend on this, but I want to really, you know, do something quite compelling. So we um, went through sort of three different options. One sort of a global cookbook, one was looking at language, and then finally we talked about the idea of a global photography competition and coming up with sort of a creative theme that would tie that together. Um, 
sort of tapping into the idea of, you know, the selfie was all the rage last year, so the idea that the world is a world of images and this is the way people record their experiences to share them. So I took this idea, pitched it into their board. Um, they were very, you know, interested in it, quite intrigued. It was going to be all based around social media, so part of the challenge we had with this collaboration was in bringing social technologies within not just an organization that didn't really have them, but an organization that was also a financial services organization. And you know, that has additional complications in terms of just the infrastructure again. So technology was a really big, you know, a big um, challenge, but one that we could address quite openly with them. Um, and that Ruth could then go back to her teams and say, look, this is what we're thinking of doing. You know, hands up if you think this is going to you know, be troublesome, whether we can do it or not. Um, very good. Um, sort of buy-in from their board who understood right from early doors, yep, we want to, you know, if this is important and we say it's important, we want to really make this count. So, you know, having them to actually make it happen. Um, and then sort of working very openly on, on the budget side, yep, I think, you right. know, that early conversations, having creative brainstorms with clients where you can really get an understanding of what the art of the possible is. Um, in the end, we opted for a, a sort of third-party platform uh, to bring in sort of Instagram, aggregate content, so allowing and encouraging employees around the business to submit their perspective, so using the idea of a photography competition as a way to capture different takes on daily worlds and, and using that framework to, to you know, frame the inclusion and diversity debate. Um, we also had a, I'm going to play a little short clip of what the interface looked like, but the teams around the world were also running a whole lot of offline events. So what we wanted to do was capture through Twitter um, the activity that was taking place in France and, and the US and Asia as the sort of clock went across. Um, so we had these sort of two aggregated walls, one the photography competition where people could post their perspectives, and secondly this Twitter feed where the teams globally could input into you know, one site. Have a look. What it looked like. Microsite was created that would service as the online hub for the campaign. Based on the idea that everyone has something unique and of value to contribute, we came up with our theme, Perspectives, the world through my eyes. The campaign launched as an opening film, encouraging people to get involved, in which leaders from around the business made personal statements about what inclusion and diversity meant to them. It's about becoming one, it's about not only being tolerant of different ideas, but actually making the most of it. In addition to this film, we collated user-generated films throughout the campaign, allowing employees from around the business to share their views on inclusion and diversity. On the 21st of May, Allianz GI staged a number of offline events. Inclusion and diversity champions posted photos and messages from these events to Twitter with the hashtag Allianz GI Live. Employees could also view these tweets, videos and images on one media wall. The main photography competition had its own media wall, where employees could post photos, either via Instagram to the hashtag AllianceGIPOV, or by uploading them directly to the microsite. Employees were encouraged to vote on the photos they liked the most, and content could be sorted by either date or popularity. Our social navigation platform allowed our clients to moderate the uploaded content via a simple but powerful user interface. Media could be hidden, deleted, or moved between media walls, and searches could be run based on a variety of criteria. At the close of the competition, the best 50 photos were judged by Allianz GI executive members, with winning images created as pieces of art to decorate the offices worldwide. The campaign was a huge success. Just to finish off with that, I think you know one of the things they, they took a quite a big risk in doing this. Um, you know, it wasn't something they'd ever done before, and you never quite know with those competitions, do you? You sort of start the day and hope I hope people submit photos. So taking that risk, it, it, you know, I think it does um, build confidence and, and enables you to continue that relationship with the client. Yeah, I mean the engagement for that campaign was, was amazing. We we're all really really pleased. I mean, in terms of the project, it's very different from Tullo. This has been the first project we've really done with Allianz GI. But some takeaways from that project, you know, to find the success early um, with the client, meet regularly and stay on task. We had a number of different client stakeholders for that particular project, from IT project management, the board, governance teams and policy teams. So make sure that you stay on task and don't go off piste. 
be the reliable point of contact through all of those different um, client teams so you can have umbrella um, all of the internal teams as well and can be the one reliable point of contact. Continue to be seen as an expert. Set achievable and shared goals. I mean, Olivia mentioned at the beginning, we, we did a, a brainstorm with the client at the very beginning of the project and that really helped to set those goals. Understand the culture, as I said before, but the language that your clients use, particularly in financial services, and understand the governance structures in which they operate because they can be very challenging for the clients and sometimes I think, as an agency, you don't always acknowledge those challenges. So for me, I think the, the, the common thread for all of what we do, and, and particularly these case studies, has been relationships. I mean, they really do build trust. And once you have that trust, you can deliver some great work, which in turn strengthens the relationship. And it's an ongoing cycle, and one that we try really hard to, to work on. Um, I personally, and I would, it's my, my job, but client service as a function is very important. Clearly, it depends on an agency set up, whether you have that function. But being that point of sort of the middleman between the client and the agency is extremely important. You can focus on the client, you can listen to their challenges, you can stay on task, and really, for me, you can let the creatives then get on with what they do best. I'm sure you'd agree. It's amazingly, a yes. It's a, it's a certain liberation when you don't have to deal with so much politics. <laughs> um, so we thought we'd just leave you with a few sort of takeaways from, from our insights. Um, relationships are changing, both with agencies and agencies are changing. So communicate effectively and bring your clients in early. You know, don't be afraid to say, we don't exactly know what this is yet, but what do you think about X or Y or Z and getting some early feedback? And I think clients expect that now. I mean, we've, we've see, I've seen other examples where you, you take a brief, you go away, you come back a week later, and the client just doesn't know where and why you've come to that conclusion. So don't be afraid to communicate with them throughout that stage. In fact, we've had feedback off the back of pitches that actually said we were surprised that you didn't get in touch more during that phase of development. So it does, they do expect that. Mm. Listen and be a trusted and transparent partner. I think as budgets are increasingly challenging, clients appreciate being spoken to regularly about your, the budget scenarios, situations you're in, um, and want to trust you to make the right decisions with their money. <laughs> Don't be afraid to co-create. I mean, co-creation is sort of, you know, not just about engaging those consumers and sort of end users, but the people that you're ultimately um, onboarding with the project, so, you know, your clients. And lastly, but most importantly, I think, you know, be passionate, energetic, and really care about what you're doing. Clients really like to feel that there's a buzz around the project and that you really do care this isn't just a, another project. Um, I think that's it. Excellent. Any questions? Thank you. Before we open up to, to the floor for, for any questions, I'd just like to um, get your view. As CTA Communication, you, you span the EVCOM landscape in that you've got the content creation, the filmmaking uh, part, and also the live uh, event experiential. Have you noticed that there's a difference in the way in which collaboration is, is uh, effective between the, those separate elements? Um, increasingly, our clients actually do expect that, as a let's say we're engaged as an event organisation, they'd expect us to have a view on content. Um, out of our top ten clients, eight of them use more than one service of ours. Mm. So there is an expectation that you to have either the capability of doing it yourselves, or at least the expertise to recommend the type of content. I think the other side that I mean, I've certainly noticed over the last you know 12 to 18 months is that in engaging so many different um, potential executions, there's a real appetite and a kind of an understanding that you need something to hang that all together. So we're being approached a lot more to look at, you know, whether it's theming or whether it's campaigning, but actually the idea that's going to sit across everything so that you're having to think, okay, this would make, this would be a great idea for an event, but how's that going to play as a film? You know, what will it be like online? And, and coming up with ideas which can, you know, sit across everything. So you're involved in, I think, a lot more sort of strategic communications, conversations earlier, not just how you execute. But execution is, is absolutely critically important. I mean, it's always been important, of course, but I think there's a much greater appreciation for that devil in the detail that professionals from events, film, you know, whatever discipline we all come from, bring to making their communication effective. Does anyone? Richard. Oh. Sorry, there's a microphone coming. 
obviously there's a lot more focus on results and impact. Do clients challenge you to get involved in measuring that? Absolutely. Always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It definitely. I mean, that's, that's something that's being discussed right up front now. You know, this is what we're trying to achieve and how will you measure success. Yeah. And that is an expectation. But also we're talking to clients about actually how they how they measure the data that they capture, how they're capturing that data. So we are challenged with understanding what analytics they have at their you know, need. Yeah. Um, I think the other really interesting thing about results, and this, this comes into play, I think, when you work between, say, events or film or online or all of that whole shebang, is that you know, being clear and understanding what success looks like might actually be, do you know what? I've got 10 people who are VIPs and I want them sitting in the front row. You know, that, that, that the, cl the conversation is thankfully, I think, moving on from, it's not just about how many likes and clicks, and that doesn't really necessarily mean success, and that success criteria are different for absolutely every single project that you run. But I think I mean, it's probably true to say, you have to work quite hard to eke this out yeah. of clients, because they haven't thought about it. You know, they often haven't sat down and gone, all oh, right, actually, what I really need to think about is, or, or be on honest about it. I mean, so I'm you're, you're challenging them in that yeah. area yeah. as much as they're challenging yeah. you. I mean, I think we, we find that um, a lot of teams, that particularly when they've, let's say, they're, you know, they're, they're under pressure, there's much smaller teams than they used to be, they're just sort of getting stuff out, they're not really thinking strategically, so I mean, I think it's our job to really test that and understand what they need, and if what they're coming to us asking for is the right solution for what they need. Thank you. Over here. I was interested to hear you talk about collaboration with other agencies on the Tullam uh, project. Who are those other agencies and how do they, we, did you bring them to the table or did the client bring them to the table and how did the collaboration work? Yes. Okay, so with Tullo, we worked with a local production company out in Ghana and that was something that Tullo were very keen, they introduced us and what, what drove that was the fact that they needed to demonstrate that they were utilising local suppliers, local content, as well as London-based teams. Um, we have brought in other supplier, uh, partner agencies, haven't we, in the yeah, past? Yeah, I mean, with Tullow, it was primarily sort of infrastructural, logistical, yeah. but we've had, a, I think, you know, I mean, more often than not, we're now working with, you know, either a lead agency because they're from a big WPP group or, or they just like their work, um, or we might be, you know, the people running the theming, the look and feel, and then we're working with execution partners, so it's definitely something that's happening a lot more and we would always I think it's probably true to say is just Invite take the facts it. on the ground and make them work like it's not always to your advantage and actually sometimes we've met some fantastic people um, other practitioners that you can really have some very good conversations with once that trust's established that you know okay we're all here we're here to do our jobs to the best of our ability um, and, and being confident as well that you know you equally have perspectives you know knowledge and insights that um, the likes of big consumer-facing brand agencies, it might not, you know, have quite. I mean, we had with Tesco, we worked quite a lot with um, Veden and Kennedy, you know, and mm -hmm. that was quite insightful of just how how different it can be dealing with different audiences. We have actually with Tolo introduced another agency. Um, to your point about data and measurement, you know, that was one of the things for the particularly for the engagement campaign. So we introduced a an agency that specialised in data capture and visualisation. So and that they, we would work in partnership with them. Hi. Um, I think some of the client, best client relationships kind of uh, form themselves when there's a bit of a crisis and you come in to <laughs> fix them. And I was wondering if in the Tello campaign that you did about data, was there a big sort of data crisis that they, they had? And, and and was that the fix? We couldn't possibly share that. <laughs> um, no, it, it wasn't, um, there wasn't a particular crisis, but what, it was interesting to watch, actually, they have a new head of information security who's really forward-thinking and very aware of the, the challenges and the fact that human behaviour is the biggest threat. And I think him being quite forward-thinking and innovative and, and embracing technology, he engaged us, so that's what made it happen. And yeah. made it happen quicker, perhaps, than some other organisations. But then along the same topic, I mean, we have a number of different clients who we seem to be dealing with it. information security, digital security. I think one of the, the um, from another client on this topic in relation to your question 
is there's a real recognition that you know you can throw as much information as you like at people. You can tell them how bad it is. You can tell them why they should change their password and not do this and do this. And it just if it doesn't change their behaviour, you've lost the battle. And that I think within that particular area of work, there's a real recognition that hey we don't know how to do this stuff. We don't know how to make people feel that this is important enough to do something differently. So, you know, going back to those success criteria, it's like, well, what do you need to do? You need to actually stop people doing some very, very concrete things and get them to do something very different. And I think there's a recognition that, you know, our partners, our clients, you know, they need our expertise to help manage that. And yes, it is a crisis. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, the, um, both those campaigns obviously involved a lot of um, different branches around the world for both companies and uh, operations around the world. Um, obviously, there's a big cultural aspect you've got to get over, which obviously video and visual, um, visual stuff partly it tra transpires, but um, how was the African side? Um, were they comfortable sort of dealing with female-led teams? Um, I know it sounds like, I know it sounds like terrible generalisation, but I know clients who've who've had well, they've the, the, the struggled to work in, in South America, let alone working working in Africa. Do you find there's a cultural pro problem there with the barriers? Do you want to talk about the, the shoot or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously, it's very different client to client. I think Tullo are, you know, in terms of as a company, that's not, you know, really an issue. And I, and I think, you know, listening and being quite, I mean, there are a couple of instances in developing those projects where it wasn't so much about a gender issue, but it was to do with we don't want to be seen to be, you know, could we set this in Uganda? And if it's recognisably Uganda, does that mean that everyone will think we have got a problem here about, you know, digital security? It was sort of more, I think, a... Um, a wider cultural, you know, uh, sense. I think with the film content, particularly with Tullo, and we've, done, we've run a number of sort of workshops with their, they have comms business part, partners effectively in each of their African locations, and we brought them together and actually just sort of tested a few different styles. And the mm. feedback, I mean, it's so in insightful, you know, there's very, they're very aware of, you know, not being patronised, um, authenticity, they don't like humour, say it like it is. Um, so, and taking all of that on board into our sort of mm. approach. But I, mean, I was the director on that shoot, so, you know, turning up in the middle of nowhere to Belisa, you know, as a female director, where you're basically, there's you and my production assistant being the only women <laughs> for miles around, really. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, again, it's just that trust, you, you're there to do a job, so I, that's not something I've ever experienced. Good. Question <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I was just wondering about collaborating sort of internally, maybe with your clients as well, what kind of tools you're using in the projects, because um, obviously these days there's endless kind of um, project software in the cloud, Basecamp and Trello and all these things, and we use Dropbox and we have our own systems, and um, obviously small companies can kind of maybe pick and choose a bit more if you haven't got your own internal ICT d department to deal with. And anyway, um, I was just wondering, what sort of things you use, or if you um, ever have any sort of challenges in that area in terms of working with remote teams and how you kind of manage the whole project and share information and updates on, on the project and get the stuff signed off. So with um, a number of our larger clients, they do use a lot of team sites, Microsoft SharePoint team sites. So we worked within that collaborative environment before. Um, we, use, we use a version of, t you know, a smaller version of team site ourselves. We also have, we've used, we actually use Vimeo, a secure environment within Vimeo to share a lot of the film content, particularly for version control. Um, do you think to add? Yeah, I think when we, uh, yeah, I think we, we tend to roll with whatever the client is using. We don't try to sort of go in and say, ah, oh, well, there's this, and it, it sort of becomes irrelevant to the conversation, if you know what I mean. Like, if it's not working, we'll find a way around. And I think paradoxically, even though there are so many uh, tools and technologies to make all of these processes sort of easier and better. My experience is people still, they actually want to pick up the phone, you know, they want you to be there, they want to eyeball you, see you face to face at least once, if not kind of on a number of occasions, mm -hmm. 
or at least know who's going to be that you know stand-in person for you at, at a, a number of other. So uh, yeah, I think roll with what's there, change it if you need to, but don't also underestimate the power of face-to-face -face and some good old-fashioned telephones. Just on the uh, issue of collaboration with your suppliers rather than uh, with client, what sort of engagement do you uh, deploy either in between projects or during projects? I think it varies. I mean, I, we're not afraid to be obviously the lead partner and we would be the main point of contact for that client, but we're also, we would equally, equally bring in our agency partners and suppliers mm. when required and be quite transparent with the client about that. I mean, yeah. it varies depending on the client relationship, but mm. I mean, we do both, don't we? Yeah, I mean, I think especially for, because we cut across these sort of different, quite different disciplines, cultures, yeah. so events, you know, it, it's a whole industry based around sort of freelance and supplier relationships. And I think what we, you know, I think hold store by is that these are our relationships, you know, they're relationships because we trust the people. They're people that we've, you know, anyone who's done film shoots before or events, it's like, it is a whole life together that you have for those 24 hours, 48 hours, however long you're going to be together to achieve that aim. They're quite, you know, they are in the end deeply personal relationships and that we don't really engage in supplier relationships that aren't tried and tested to us, mm -hmm. that we don't enjoy the relationship ourselves and we're in a sense kind of even if the client doesn't necessarily know who those people are, you are gifting that relationship to them. So you have to be, I think, very confident yeah. in what you're either selling on or presenting or who you're co-creating with. But <clears throat> if that chemistry is right, then you know there's never. I mean, one of the clients we work with is the Royal Navy, um, and we have <coughs> done for a number of years. And there's a large agency pool there, and we have a number of um, suppliers that we work with for that particular account. And we've done a lot in terms of guidelines, induction, so actually bringing the suppliers in, talking them through what our experience with the client culturally, how they are, they're very unique in their way, I'd say, the Royal Navy. Um, <laughs> to understand a call sheet, you need a... The acronyms, <laughs> but making sure that when, when we go on a shoot or any project, that everyone on that team is good to go and aligned. From a client perspective, they don't want us to be discussing that kind of stuff on the shoot or on location. I mean, some clients, I think, like you to be very transparent mm. you know and actually demand it now i mean we're seeing an increased um, drive toward you know no markup on third party costs and it has to well, all be sort of you know open things. books so you know there, there's sort of that school of thought and then there's the school of thought that says you're the you know, just get Deal on with, with it, it. Yeah. we don't want to know actually we're paying you not to have to bother so just make it happen um somewhere between the two i guess everyone will have their own experience mm. of that Excellent. just one final uh, question for query from me, which is with regards to international collaboration, what are the big obstacles and challenges uh, and where are the success opportunities? Oh, can I kick this one off? Because yes, I think can. this is really interesting. English as an international language. <laughs> um, I mean, I think one of the biggest challenges is comes back to that idea of theming or finding ideas which are going to resonate um, across very different markets in very different you know, circumstances. And to be very, very, and this is where I think that collaboration and, and having a dialogue with clients is so important because they're the only ones who are gonna be able to tell you, do you know what, if you use that word here, it's just not, it's gonna be offensive. You know, people will sort of fall out of their chairs and try and sue you or something. Or, you know, or, or an image, for instance. It's like here mm -hmm. in these markets, this means one thing. If you do it there, it means something completely different. Um, and then I think where clients aren't, so if you don't have a relationship early on where you feel quite confident that you can take their advice and, and really act on that information early doors so that it, you get it right, I think you have to be quite disciplined yourself about making, not making assumptions, about saying, right, this is, the, this is what we're planning to do. You know, let's try and think about it from a whole lot of different angles. Let's talk to people who've lived there. Let's, you know, and, and not be precious at all about ideas because they will have to change based on who you're trying to communicate with. And really putting the audience first, I think, rather than this is my fantastic you know, concept and it has to remain and I'm going to stamp my foot and be the creative director. It, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't communicate, it hasn't done its job. And so you have to test yourself, but also listen to the people who are able to you know, give you the information you need to make it work. Anything else? Sorry, that was a little bit of a rant, wasn't yeah. it? No, no, I think the end of the much more on the sort of operational side, but I think the clients, particularly with social responsibility and, and what they're doing locally being such a high priority, um, a number of our clients are, in, you know, are encouraging us to work with local teams globally and suppliers. 
we make it our job to work well with them. Sure. Excellent. Olivia, Chan, thank you very much uh, for that. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you.